Do you? Share it. Please. <laughs> are we live? This we time? are live. Did he push the button? That button, too. Oh. <laughs> yes. Got it. And we're live. I don't know if it actually pulled that beginning part of us having a conversation or not to throw in there, but I think it actually does. Hey, we are live to this week's Yawa episode 45. But uh Hey, turn your volume down, buddy. I'm turning it. I'm turning it. I'm turning it. So distracting. All right. So, folks, we are here this week to talk to you about a lot of different things. Um, First and foremost, there was an amazing turnout for our Black Friday sale. Yes, it was awesome. Thank you guys so much for shopping online with us. If you didn't get in on that deal and you're wishing that you would have, I think we're going to have... And I think we talked about having like a last minute uh, get your dog a treat or easy lead or something like that prior to Christmas. So yeah, we're gonna do uh, we something might be doing something here. in a couple weeks here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I believe uh, the turnout was just north of 500 orders, which is insane. So again, uh, it's just uh, we want to say a big thank you to everybody. And I know there's quite a few people here probably listening that did order something. Um, which is awesome, but the other side of it is we uh, we just want to let you know how much we appreciate it, how much we appreciate the sport and the business. So we have a couple different things. Now, this is one that I know that a lot of y'all have been waiting for for a little while, and I am going to drag it out a little bit, okay, because you waited long enough, you're going to have to wait some time. This is Yawa. It is about you ask, we answer, and we have been asked this specific question a ton, and we will get to that in this week's episode. And what, what, pray tell, is that question? Oh, I believe it's about the pink gun. It is about the pink gun, and everybody wants to know the story behind the pink gun. And we said we would reveal that story after we hit 50,000 subscribers. We are past that now and have put off the story a little bit thinking... Maybe we would end up doing a standalone video about it or something like that. And Ethan said, no, no, no. We just want to do it with our fans, the people that are you tuning in, watching our questions and answer sessions. And now that we've started this live format, which we really, really like, it's um, a great way to be able to share stories and things like that with you guys kind of in person or as in person as we can get. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the, the fun little things, I, I threw this up on the Instagram story, what uh, everybody always wants to know, what am I drinking this evening? This is the Weller Single Barrel. This was a gift uh, from Rip the GSP. Thanks, buddy. And uh, we're going to, I'll give you my, this is actually the first time, there's my uh, pop, glug, glug, glug. This is the first time I've ever actually had this, so... This is the Maiden Voyage, and we're going to let that breathe a little bit because the bottle just opened and all of the things. It's something you should know. Let your bottle breathe and your first pour breathe just a little bit. Didn't know that, but I also don't drink bourbon, so. And if you all are wondering what I've got mixed up here tonight, because, I mean, it probably shouldn't be an alcoholic beverage. It smells so good. It is a virgin mojito uh, because we found this really awesome this summer, actually, when I was having them non-virgin, um, mojito mix, and mm-hmm. it makes such a good mojito. So this is everything that that is minus the alcohol. Absolutely. Um, so I want to jump in here. First of all, we've got uh, Elizabeth Wallace says, hi, Kelly's on here. Howdy. Howdy. Um, we've got another hello. That's awesome. And then and uh, lots of questions rolling right in. And howdy from Texas. That's Manny Martinez. Um, Central Iowa. Where are all the check-ins at here? Northeast Panhandle of Texas. Where else have we got? What's up from Rhode Island? Did you get that one? Did I miss you saying that? <laughs> at 731. I have faith in Ethan, but I have to ask, did you forget to hit the go button again? <laughs> you guys are... You guys are Johnny awesome. on the spot. Mm-hmm. One of those. Oops, I did it again. Hey, now, 
timing fluctuates slightly around our house because it does involve getting a two-year-old to go down for bed. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. his bedtime is right around 7, 7.30, give or take the day. So uh, sorry we were rolling a couple minutes late. But it wasn't because Ethan forgot to push the button this time. Mm-mm. I think we're I think we're rocking and rolling now. Um, it's got uh, what Wellers. I said this is the Wellers single barrel. Green label is good. Orange label is um, supposed to be gooder, but it's uh, definitely just a different flavor. So we'll see. And then uh, somebody else said, appreciate the fast shipping. I already got my order. Whoop, whoop. Love your show. From Pennsylvania. Love Virgin Mojitos. That's uh, uh, Irie Jones. Let's see, he dropped off old Jake today. Oh, awesome. Sorry I missed you. I was also at a dentist appointment today. We got here, New Jersey, uh, New Jersey Metro, NYC, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Ohio, Ohio Wisconsin, Oshkosh. Florida, California, Hello South from Dakota. South Dakota. Hey, we're heading that way next week. That's awesome. Wyoming, Wyoming, Wisconsin, California. Holy crap. Memphis, Tennessee, Kentucky, Denver, Atlanta, Florida, Wisconsin again. Holy cow, you guys are from all over the place. Thank you for checking in. That's awesome. Oh, somebody's drinking Buffalo Trace, baby. That's Ooh. one of Ethan's go-tos. Absolutely. It's usually a warm-up at the, at the absolute least. Let's see here. All right, let's go ahead and start with a question. We had somebody tune in right away at 7.02 p.m. Sitting you and rocking and rolling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It says, what is your opinion on doggy daycare? Mm. It's an easy way to tire out my pup. But it's unstructured. It's, uh, is it detrimental to having a well-mannered, healthy dog? Thank you for your time. Okay, so this is a good one. And I believe, uh, because I've actually made this recommendation a ton, it's like, do you have a doggy daycare facility near you? And the reason for that is it is beneficial, 100%. It is beneficial. Now, if you were relying 100% on that, this is the only thing the dog does, five days a week, goes to doggy daycare, screws off, does whatever it wants. That is not going to be overly ideal in the grand scheme of things. Yes. It's going to be one of those things that you need to incorporate a good balance. So one day a week, fantastic. Maybe two, depending on what things look like. But ultimately, it's one of those things that you need to have a balance between exercise outside of that's field-based or hunting-based, if that's what your goals are, and then also obedience work that you're putting the time, effort, and energy into at home. Um, and Mental stimulation, learning new things. Mm-hmm. And socialization is really, really important, and those things can happen at a doggy daycare. Mm-hmm. I would also probably say that not all doggy daycares are created equal. Yeah, so do your homework, do your research, and find one that's going to meet your needs um, and make sure that they have, you know, enough supervision in those situations that it is going to be a safe environment for your dog to go to. Absolutely. So uh, to answer the question, yes, go to doggy daycare. It's not the end of the world. Just don't make it the go-to 100%. Yeah, don't overuse it. Just like, hey, Aiden gets to watch a little bit of Sunday morning cartoons, but we don't pop a screen in front of him in front of him constantly when we're sitting down to dinner or anything like that. Um, Anything can be overdone and overused. Absolutely. What else have we got? All right. So everybody that's tuning in right now, I do want to throw out uh, last time we actually did a really cool giveaway. Okay. We gave away one of our new waters. And if you didn't know, we, or if you've seen in our posts, those gravity aluminum waters, they are now on our website available. And uh, the one we gave out last week was supposed to have delivered today yes. to and Hawaii. Hawaii. And I talked to Jared, messaged him today to see if it had showed up. And he said he would check when he got home and he was planning on tuning in. So maybe he'll show up and say, hey, it arrived. But it he arrived. said he was going hunting this weekend. So it would come into uh, good use. So. It's awesome. So what we're going to end up doing today is actually a swag giveaway. Uh, A lot of people found that was a lot of fun. Um, We're going to be doing some trivia type questions here at the end again. Um, We found out, we found out that the comments disappear after a while. So we couldn't go back and check people's correct answers from the beginning of the comment section. So we're going to wait to the end so that we don't lose your answers and then we can get them all in at the same time. Shall we say? Good. Is it good? Mm-hmm. It's good. 
But the swag package, our new t-shirts, we have a, um, it's called, what I, it's not called, it says, I ducking with a D, love German short hair pointers. And it's a picture of Shooter holding the duck in his mouth. It's a really, really cool t-shirt. And those are a also standing stone on the front with yep. a little circle patch. Those are on our website, and then you'll be able to pick your t-shirt size and a hat of your choice. So whoever is the winner tonight, that is what the giveaway is. You got another question? Yeah, this was a good one from Elizabeth Wallace. What is your opinion on having two GSPs? I have one, and I'm looking to get another. Well, if you know us, we have multiple GSPs. The more the merrier. But there's probably a limit to that number, as well as having an appropriate age gap for most people would also be important. As well as if you have the space for multiple dogs. Um, getting two litter mates probably wouldn't be a recommendation just because it's going to be really hard to raise two puppies at once. But having, you know, a year spread out or a couple years spread out between those two dogs is going to be a nice age gap. Um, you've got an older, more mature dog when you're starting to raise and develop a young puppy again. But having two is great. Hunting with two is awesome. You get to watch them work together. They point, they back, they honor each other's retrieves. It's a really cool way to hunt dogs together. Or you can rotate. One dog needs a break. They're getting tired. The next dog hits the field, and you can keep hunting all day or until you're too tired to hunt. What do you think? Uh, my big thing, and a lot of people ask this question a lot, but I often say there is a fairly um, small difference between having one dog and having two dogs. Yeah, there's another dog to let out, and yes, there is another dog to feed, but in, in the grand scheme of things, there's not a huge difference between one dog and two dogs. There is a very, very, very big difference between two dogs and three dogs because now you've gone from a pair of dogs to a pack. And, a, and managing that energy, they feed off of one another oof, and it yep. can escalate quickly. But at the same time, there isn't much difference between three and ten. So if you have three, you might as well <laughs> shoot the moon. <laughs> That's right. I, I forget that you have that saying. That We should put that on a t-shirt. That's <laughs> that, that, would, that would take up a lot of space. It would go on the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> you could have uh, pictures of dogs. It'd be like one dog plus one dog equals basically one dog. Yeah. One dog equals You're one dog. One dog plus one dog equals one dog. One dog plus one dog plus one dog equals a pack. Yep. And a pack plus one... I have no idea where I'm going with this. Equals infinity. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> might as well. Ooh, Grand Rapids, Michigan here. More people tuning in. Iowa, Western Kansas. You seeing any birds out there, Tyler? Mm-hmm. So this was a good question from Kelly. What you got? Can you speak to starting healing training with the easy lead prior to starting field training? We live in town, and he's going to pull my arm out of the socket. Jackson, SMO, GSP in New Jersey. So we always like to see a dog that has a bold, confident, independent search in the field prior to starting healing training because if you put too much emphasis on healing, the problem with that is they get sticky and they want to be next to you and they don't know how to get out and expand their search and you get a dog that doesn't range and doesn't find their own birds and you have to walk them to all of these birds that you've planted when you're starting to train. That's a big reason that we say put off the healing training until your dog has shown those things. Um, but the other side of it is we understand people live in town and they have to be able to take their dogs for walks and they have to be able to take them to go to the bathroom. And usually that age mark where we're saying start healing training if you've you know done the proper exposure can be around five months old. But a five-month-old puppy can start getting pretty strong. Um, However, anytime after that point and the exposures happened, definitely start working on healing and leash manners. Um, but we do understand there is that difficulty of working on healing or taking your dog for a walk, and that's the type of evening routine you have to get them to go work a little bit and go to the bathroom. So 
um, you do have to have some expectations as well. Did you find another question you want to answer? I found one. This is pretty funny. This is Joe. It says, finally, an answer to the question of the year, the pink gun. <laughs> I have two thoughts. One. Oh, he's, he's got yes, his ideas on what yes, the story is. Yes, and I thought is. this would be a really good idea. It says, one, uh, it says, it's so that no one will steal your gun. Or two, it has something to do with breast cancer awareness. So I thought this would be a really kind of fun oh. thing for people to do. Go ahead and throw in the comments. Um, and what this, your guess about yeah, what the your guess is, and that could be. I mean, that could definitely play into the role of uh, winning something. I mean, sure, if you can guess not? right, I doubt any of you will guess right. But uh, so if that don't don't repeat the ones above there. No, I'm just kidding. If you got a guess, go ahead and throw it in the comments below. Why do I have and or carry pink guns? How did that start out? Mm -hmm. The origin story. Here we are. Bum, bum, bum. All right, let's see here. We've got a really good one. Here, it says... Hope to keep my 10-week-old GSP from developing separation anxiety. This is a question that people are asking about all the time. So she's in her crate six hours a day, and someone comes halfway throughout the day to let her out to potty, play, run around. Okay, so six months old. Ten months, no, ten week old. ten weeks old. Six hours a day. Ten weeks old. It's probably still a good idea to get that midday potty break. Mm -hmm. Um. Not that even the adult dogs wouldn't love to have a midday potty break. If that's not an option, it's not an option sometimes for people. But as far as developing separation anxiety, um, I think the biggest mistake that people make with this, and this is very, 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 very common, okay? You only put the dog in the crate when you leave. That creates this... Um, apprehension and anticipation of not of, a good thing of being alone. So our dogs are pack animals. They want to be part of things. They want to be part of us. And this is another thing that I would say, um, we're going to shoot a video more about this specifically, but some people have asked recently about their dog has separation anxiety or hates the crate or so on and so forth. And they, they're creating their puppies and the puppies are going ballistic and that is lasting for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour sometimes I've heard. And they're saying, what do we need to do? Where did we go wrong? What is going on? So I start, you know, asking a little bit, is the, um, what kind of crate do you have? Because that matters. And then where is the crate at in the vicinity of where you are? Because obviously, if you can hear the dog going nuts for 20 plus minutes, you're in the house with them. And they said, well, it's uh, a lot of times at bedtime or it's at this time or whatever else. And so, you know, moving, utilizing crate time when the dogs, when you are home with the dogs is important and allowing them to get comfortable with that and having that crate. There's two main options, either having that crate away in a quiet place is good if they're struggling with that, having that crate closer to you so that they know and feel like they're part of the pack and the family and everything else. But as long as you're not only utilizing the crate for when you're leaving only, you shouldn't really have any issues. Um, I think the biggest mistake people make in regards to that is not utilizing crate time enough. And when they don't utilize it enough, the few times that the dogs go in the crate, they do. They throw a little, they give a little pushback. Hey, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. So, so um, I was just looking because sometimes we get, caught up with reading and answering the question that we don't necessarily read ac down further. So that was from Brittany Hooper. She had a couple more comments that I think tie in with that. Okay. She loves her crate at night or throughout the day, but when I leave, she whines for 10 to 15 minutes and gets so excited when I return that sometimes she pees herself and shakes. Mm. So um, also very good information. I would guess and – would love to see. This is where Patreon comes in, okay? That's where I'm answering questions on the daily. I mean, there's very few times that I don't actively... Um, Respond to messages, even on Thanksgiving. Yep. <laughs> um, I Just a second, guys, here. I'm getting some pushback here that we are bopping in and out from an internet standpoint which we have not had issues with in the past. Has anyone been mentioning that we've been... I'm going to scroll down. 
I don't see. No, it just happened. It's been giving us like a, your internet's slower, but now it's back up to green. So I don't. We're know also here. having bad weather, so that can be. That could affected. be part of it because mm-hmm. we have pretty crappy internet. Okay, well we're back up now, so I'm guessing it's going to kick in and out a little bit. Let me see what that. We're going to run a little tester. So okay. all right, so I would. This is where Patreon is going to come in. It's going to be very beneficial. So the Patreon aspect of things is it's going to allow me to see what specifically is going on, and what I want to specifically see is your interaction and the dog's interaction. This is going to allow me to read what's going on and how to actually fix that. So if you sign up at Patreon.com/slash/StandingStoneKennels, you can set up so that we can either do live videos, which would be the best way for me to see that. Um, We actually do like a Google Meets or a Zoom call type of thing, and I can see live what's going on, or the options second to that would be to send videos. And once you send the video, I can see what happened and then respond to that as well. But it gives us the ability to see what you're doing, what the dog's doing, and then give you direct feedback on how to fix it. As well as have a conversation back and forth because, again, scrolling back down, she's Mm -hmm. commented a few more times now in relation to what we've been asking questions on. She's been filling in some of the blanks that we had. Um, So that would be a really great place to have some of those conversations as well. I like it. I like it. Ooh, here's another one. Okay. Go, since I lost my place. Any quick fixes for a dog that works too big? I'm assuming running too far from you. Um, ooh, the quick fix for me, or in my opinion, would be collar conditioning. Collar conditioning is going to give us the step one. There's a the quick fix is multiple steps, so it's not really that quick of a fix, I guess. But um, step one, collar conditioning. Make sure that you have a good handle and the dog understands how to come back when you're calling. Then. Once we get to that point, we're going to utilize a drill that's going to teach the dog to be able to stay with us. You can do this on foot or with a four-wheeler ATV on an exercise run. Um, If your dog is really, really struggling, it helps to have multiple dogs out there. But the goal is just to start hunting and change directions. And then change directions. Once the dog's back with you, change directions again. And once the dog's back with you, change directions again. And you're going to do all of this without um, without cueing them or without talking to them, without directing the dog. And once you start doing that, the dog starts to learn that they need to pay more attention themselves. And when they pay more attention, then they do a better job of hunting with you as opposed to for themselves or with themselves. And you're just trying to keep up. The other side of it is you can do a nagging type system with that collar conditioning where you just handle, 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 handle. But that kind of requires in and of itself more handling. So um, our go-to with that, and it's not a quick fix, but it's definitely a, a, a really good option, is just to start that changing directions without them paying attention. Keep an eye on them because you can you can lose the dog this way a little bit too. They can get turned around and start going to look for you. But keep an eye on them, and as soon as they catch back up to you, good dog, let's do it, and then you change directions again. And when you're doing that, it's going to force them to pay more attention and develop that more cooperative hunting style. So, Good question. Mm-hmm. A very good question. This one is a good question because it's a little bit different from Lone Star Steph. Current litter is eight weeks old. When does my mom lose interest, if at all? Thank you. Steph B. from Tustin, California. So that really depends. It depends on the mom, and we've seen it um, with other moms from puppies are five weeks old, and mama is pretty much done. She doesn't really want to be in there. She's hopping out of the whelping box constantly. Um, maybe doing a little nursing, but she's pretty much done cleaning up up after the puppies, um, is starting to say, Hey, you're using too much teeth and kind of putting puppies in their place that young. But then we've had moms that really don't push their puppies to wean and they're still laying down with the puppies at seven weeks old to nurse. And we typically pull moms, um, around six weeks and say, okay, I don't want to say forced weaning, but hey, we need to move forward with 
puppies need to be on full kibble by then so that they're ready to go home to their families at eight weeks. If she's still nursing and being with them at eight weeks, that can also take a lot out of a mama. You've got eight-week-old puppies that have a full head of teeth and should be eating kibble and um, crunching it up just fine and drinking water without issues, and they're still nursing on mom. Well, mom is in overdrive milk production. It can be really hard on them, and they can get really thin at that point as Mm -hmm. well because they just can't produce enough milk for what the puppies are consuming. So it's important for us to kind of advocate and guide and, that weaning process. And when that kicks in, the mom's, did you say this specifically, and I missed it, but the mom's body basically goes in survival mode. I didn't say that, but I okay. said they go into overdrive of milk production. Yeah. Yep. And, and when they do that, it's not survival for them. They don't cut off milk production. They, they go into, like Kat said, into overdrive, but it's to, we're going to save all of the puppies. And when they do that, they stop giving any of the rest of their body nutrition. So... They turn to like skeletons, almost, it seems like almost instantly. They get thin really fast, yeah. as well as, and it doesn't seem to matter how much you feed them at that point. You're like, oh man, mom's getting thin, Once let's do pack it, on the food. Yep, it all goes to milk. Then they're already in that, hey, I've got to produce for my puppies, and so everything you're giving them turns into milk production, and then they get way overfilled milk teats, and um, can even have problems as far as like drying up and mastitis goes at that point if you reach that overproduction stage mm-hmm. or um, that milk fever calcium deficiency because yeah because you know, mom's not just getting pulling enough. so much from them and the only way to fix that is to cut them off yes so, so good question a little bit different question since we don't get a lot of puppy raising questions I here. figured out a better way to find your spot I don't know if you had been doing this or no but no. Um, it says all of the times right so you oh, can go yeah. back to a 743 to look well I'd been doing that I thought there was like a quick bookmark button or something um there's you can pin questions at the top you can pin them and then unpin them so if you want to save one ah uh-huh, cool uh-huh so here we've got that. one that just says uh from joseph says any luck deer hunting this year saw that you're a fan of ranch fairy adult arrows on insta okay well i will tell you i am a fan of that but i'm not 100 percent sure off the top of my head what the adult fairy arrows are but um i will tell you the deer game this year has been weak Mm -hmm. for a couple reasons a couple reasons one of which i lost my lease had a lease out west of town um and then we've been busy we've just been busy working yeah and we do um Ethan just played set up feeders and get cameras set because rifle season just opened and Mm -hmm. we're going to try and do a little bit of rifle hunting here in the next week, but planned way ahead for this one. Way ahead. Kansas opener today. I'm setting up a feeder (laughs) and cameras. Yeah. Let's see what we got out there, folks. Yeah. So the deer game is a little weak, but we do um, plan on doing a little bit of hunting. Mm -hmm. Just not as much as normal. Really setting stuff up now, hopefully to be able to pull in some deer that are getting pushed around by other people and then maybe stick one with an arrow after rifle season's over. As well as we just purchased more land, so being able to set some of that up and have some food plots for next year and things like that and do a little more management on that property in preparation for deer hunting should also be a good Good thing for next year. Next year's deer game will be stronger. And I just got a chance to pick up my bow finally because if you don't know anything um, about the bow industry right now, places were shut down due to COVID and way, 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 way back ordered on a lot of things. So my bow finally came in. (laughs) I was able to get it set up and I haven't even finished sighting it in. So I'm probably not going to be using my bow this season. We got, uh, it says... I think that's Dario says, I'm just here to see the whiskey selection. <laughs> here it is. Weller single barrel. That's funny. Pop. Glug, glug, glug. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's pretty tasty. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, there it goes. It's going the right direction now. A big fan of the, the Weller collection. I'm still missing a CYPB, which is the white label, not the orange label, the white label. Uh, but that one's been really hard to find. So I, a uh, buddy of mine, Charles, he and I stood in line 
for a Black Friday deal. And we got in line at, was it like 12.30 at night? You left the house at 11.30, so yeah, yep. about 12.30. So about 12.30 at night, we jumped in line at this liquor store that was going to have, they had this really big selection here in Wichita. And we stood in line until 9 o'clock. Ooh, it was cold. And we didn't, we dressed warmish, but we didn't fully prepare for that. But um, literally the guy ahead of, maybe it was two guys ahead of us, took the last bottle that was available. Once I missed it by like two people. <sighs> Should have left it 1030. <sighs> yep. Then we would have got, uh, Should have left it 1030. <laughs> There's people that supposedly the people up at the front of the line left were lined up at 10 o'clock. Okay. Should have left at 930. Yeah. Now we know. We're just going to bring a pop-up uh, deer blind and a heater and snacks and then extra battery packs. We're going to sit there, play. Yeah. We got this next year. You got a game plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I want to answer another question. I want you to answer a question. From Jordan Mangan. How do you stop a dog from crowding and working on scenting from further distances? Uh. And I thought this was a really good question because of the videos that we've got coming up and that we just shot one. What day? Monday? Sunday? With Covey? Oh, yeah. Gosh, his memory is super sharp. Who's got pregnancy brain? His memory is super sharp. I had no idea what you were talking about. Scenting so, and crowding in. Yep. So we have a, we did just shoot a video. Um, it was a lot of fun. A good friend and. Uh, outdoorsman. Outdoorsman extraordinaire, Ron Spomer. If you guys don't know Ron Spomer, you need to go over and check out Ron Spomer Outdoors. He's got a YouTube channel. He has a podcast and I absolutely love his podcast because what he's actually doing is reading old articles. The guy's been a writer forever. I don't, Longer I don't than know. We've been around. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. 40 years, maybe something. I, I don't know how long, long time writes for shooting sportsman, American hunter, a bunch of other big shooting and hunting articles. He's killed a ton of different big game. He's killed a ton of different stuff, whatever. Loves to bird hunt. I actually got to bird hunt with him. If you go back and watch some of our videos when I went blue quail hunting and sand hill, quail, sand hill crane hunting in Texas, he was there. Um, and I've got his young dog. We've got his young dog, Cubby, in for some of those kind of issues. So we're going to be doing some videos to try and compile some of the data showing a little different than what we do primarily. We'll combine multiple training sessions into one video, hopefully, to, to show, show progress. progression. Yep, all at one time, so you don't have to wait for it so long. And um, because most of our videos in the past have yep. been That's like right. a live session showing the progression of a puppy through these steps, or a dog mm -hmm. that is, you know learning to be steady to wing shot and fall or a dog that's going through formal trained retrieve work. We haven't really done any video work on a dog that has a couple faults or is struggling with a specific thing that we're trying to help work through. And that's what we're helping going to be helping Covey work through is she does overcrowd a little bit and doesn't always hold her point super well. So that's something that she's two and a half. We're going to be able to show that progression of how we're going to help her hold point longer and not crowd in on the scent. So uh, what, what, what? You're looking mm -hmm. at me. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at me then. Mm -hmm. So you're so cute. So that is um, c coming up, but it really depends on a little more information for your dog's specific situation. Because is it a young dog? Is it a dog that's hunted a few seasons? Have you tried um, started out working with? Bird launchers, is your dog formally woe trained yet? So need a little more information. Again, this is another place where I'd say, hey, head on over to Patreon so that we can get some more details, maybe even see a session of your dog out working and see if we can give some feedback and advice. Absolutely. We got a bunch of answers coming in as far as why the pink gun. Some people think I like pink. Some people think it matches my underwear. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> is possible. One. Um, some people think it'll be easier to find if you set it down, which is actually an interesting one, uh, Jason. It's not easier to find. Surprisingly enough, the pink, 
it blends in with the green. That's a weird thing to say, but it okay. does. So the opposite, it camouflages it. Kind of, but not really. Um, my dog is afraid of guns. Is there an easy way to fix that? How? Is your dog afraid of guns or is your dog afraid of gunfire? That's my question. I'm assuming gunfire. Well, I want to know. Some people would say their dog's afraid of the actual gun itself or they get excited when the gun comes out of the gun closet. Mm. Um, it says pink is an unnatural color, easily seen. No one will steal it. You lost a bet. Oh, I think we're getting warmer. Um, you lost your gun in the past and pink stands out. Uh, or you stole cat's gun. No. I will just tell you right now, that's a hard no. And actually <laughs> ties in with his story later on. So. And Ethan, I need another gun. Cat says, okay, you got it. And here's the pink gun. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you stole your wife's gun. Ooh. She wouldn't have been caught dead with a pink gun. This says your favorite dog wore a pink collar, and that's how you honor her. That's an excellent idea, but uh, too bad I didn't think of it. Wild guess, you are colorblind and someone trying to play a prank on you. Okay. I only know one colorblind person, and we ask him to pick out what color things are every time I see him. It's such a fun game. It is a fun game. Hey, what color is this? Usually we just get the middle finger. <laughs> um, wow, these are excellent. It says they all... It was the only uh, colored stock they had at the time when I was buying a particular gun. Um, your mom thought you were a girl and your dad bought you a pink gun. Huh. Huh. I don't know. We should phone mom real quick and find out if she thinks I'm a girl. Uh, you lost your gun and someone told you to get a pink one so you wouldn't lose it again. Mm-hmm. Okay, what are some signs of a GSP's urinary tract oh, infection? Oh, we're, we're jumping completely off of the. <laughs> I, I ran questions. out. Of, I ran out. Back of to them. questions. Ooh, and then I've got another one that's really good here. I'm gonna pin it and see how that works. Yep. Uh, pin message message pinned. I don't know where it pinned it to, but it's pinned. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's it, right here. Is that the one you just pinned? Uh, yeah, it just popped hey, up on my phone cool. too. Okay, so I'm going to answer another one real quick right before that. It says, what are the signs of a GSP's urinary tract infection? It's typically going to be, these are pretty normal. It's typically going to be small amounts of pee lots of times. That is pretty common. Or not being able to hold their pee where they normally were before. So it's just that constant feeling of having to pee and them peeing where they're not supposed to or too often or something like that. That would be the main things. If you're seeing those things, you probably have some form of bladder or urinary tract infection or something to that effect. All right, so we have the pinned question. It says, are seizures common in GSPs? The answer to that is no, but I have seen it in a very select few number of dogs. One dog had... Oh, we don't know 100% because it wasn't full on epilepsy, but she had almost exercise-induced seizures, which could have been glucose-related. We don't 100% know. Um, we sent off blood work. Mm-hmm. Which was hard because the only way the blood work truly was going to be beneficial was if we could pull blood while the dog was actively seizing or something. And I was Which like, would ah. be very difficult. Yes. So the dog came in with the owner knowing that it had had a couple seizures. Well, we figured out what what caused the seizures, and that was uh, strenuous exercise for about 10 minutes. Um, if she lollygagged, there was no seizure. If she worked really hard and, and within about 10 minutes of hunting, there was a seizure. Um, and then I know another gentleman that's had a dog that's, um, his dog also has glucose related, glucose I believe. Glucose ones, yeah. Yep. So there, there it is. it's common enough that I've, I've heard of two dogs in the last 11 years that this happened to. Mm -hmm. But um, so I would say no, it's not common in short hairs, but it could potentially happen. But it is definitely kind of scary the first time you actually see this happen in person. Oh my gosh, it's Especially ridiculously scary. Especially when you scary. aren't prepared, 
knowing about it. Mm, no, the dog just starts walking and slowing up and then seizing. It's very scary. And then the other side of it is it's not only scary to you, but it's very scary to the dog. And the very first time that I saw it happen um, with this dog specifically, I went over and I was trying to figure it out and I'm like, ah, the dog's having a seizure. And I get over there and I'm trying to help hold her kind of or do something it lasted what felt like an eternity but I believe it was only about 30 or 40 seconds and when she came to she kind of got up and was looking around and then went holy crap and took off and like saw you and was like what just happened and yeah and there. bolted I mean she was scared to death so um then it was I carried a leash anytime I took her out in case it happened again which it happened several other times but um clip the lead to her when she woke up. At least then I had her on leash and we could say, hey, sweetheart, it's just us. Here you go. And then we would go back to the kennel. So it's um, it's very scary. I hope that you don't specifically have a dog that has seizures, but um, I don't know exactly what the question is related to, but it's not overly common. So unpinned message. It's gone. You see how that works? Oh, hey, that's nifty. I like that. Okay. Um, here's an answer back here. It says separate bedroom next to ours. It's 42 inches, but has a divider inside. Okay, Brittany. Step number one, throw the wire crate with the divider away. We're not fans of wire crates. And neither is your dog. Um, no, most dogs don't really do overly well in them. Like the, it's going to be more often than not, the wire crate is going to cause issues because they don't feel right in them. So get the fully enclosed clamshell. Oh, I could just put a blanket or a sheet over top of it. That is a great way for the dog to then pull the blanket or sheet in and or anything else that the crate is actually close, close to, to that yeah, they can yeah, yeah. get to. I mean, curtains, anything, anything. and everything. Yeah. Speaking from experience only here, folks. Uh, a lot of the way that we answer these questions, we've already dealt with it firsthand and. And these are what we've dealt with. So. As well as those crates are typically pretty easy to escape because the dog can bend the wire fairly easily as they get bigger. Mm -hmm. And I've seen lots of dogs work their way out of those wire crates. Yep. Um, as well as last thing that <laughs> I'm going yeah, last thing that I'm gonna mention about wire crates is if there ever is an accident, it goes everywhere. Yeah, there's no enclosure that. Wire crate, everything gets splitter splattered all over the place. Goes everywhere. So um, the next thing is it's in the room next to yours. If, uh, you know, if she's really having issues, it may be better to put the crate in with you where she feels a little more included. And a lot of times that's going to help the dogs settle down it sound, a little faster. It sounds like she's having problems only when she leaves the is dog. Is she though? only being crated when she leaves, though? Doesn't sound like it from one mm -hmm. of the other comments. So More information patreon would be a great way reach out to us it's not very expensive um it is a subscription fee but it's not very expensive and we'd love to be able to help you pink gun because you used to sell mary Kay and weren't good enough for the pink car <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one uh okay this is an interesting question and i just want to read it because uh it says it, it is freezing a bit here and there i'm sorry guys Hopefully it's not lagging anymore. Check the, does it look like it is? What's the stuff on there mean? It's going back and forth and I think it's just tonight and I With apologize, the but there's. We cannot control the weather. Nah, hopefully it, it continues to catch up and it's not totally missed here. And we also so. can't control our internet connection yet. But when fiber becomes available. We're buying the best you can get. We're on it. Give us a T1 line, baby. That just means all you guys have to sign up for Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> better internet yep um yep, 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 yep. this was a good question because i can't answer it Uh oh my gsp is a little over five months old and right around 52 pounds 18 inches tall the vet says he is extremely healthy and he gets plenty of exercise a day how big should we expect him to get i can't answer that there's a lot of things Pop. going into look, look, look. the size of your dog one i Hate to say this, but not all vets know what a short hair should look like. Mm -hmm. um, what a healthy weight is for a GSP. They're not as familiar with sporting breeds or they're used to seeing overweight couch potatoes. So seeing a dog that 
is barely overweight or a little soft, they're probably like, oh yeah, that's super healthy. But especially with a five month old GSP, 52 pounds sounds pretty darn big. I mean, Splishy Splash is like five months old and she is smaller, but she's what, probably 25 Tiny. pounds? She's not so, big. No, she's not big, um, but she's definitely not thin. However, you definitely don't want to be overfeeding your puppy at that age because they can grow too quickly and end up having some joint issues um, because ligaments and bones are growing at different rates. So I need to see a picture of your puppy to know if it's got good body condition. And what I mean by good body condition is, does it still have a waist? Can I see a couple ribs, but not all the ribs? I don't want to see hip points. Um, but those are kind of the general things that I'm looking for in a photo. Um, to see if the puppy is soft or overweight or underweight. Because like I said, 52 pounds for a five-month-old puppy sounds a little bit big, but without seeing an actual picture of your puppy, sounds I can't giant. say. It sounds giant. And then because I don't know if your body, your puppy's got good body condition, I can't say, well, maybe your puppy's got good body condition and it's just going to be a giant at, you know, 80-pound short hair when it's full grown. Or we need your puppy's photos. just fat right now. Unfortunately, a little soft needs to be cut back and he'll end up being a 65 pound dog. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. So just wanted to tell you, I can't answer that. We got a hi from Australia. Yay. Hi, hi. from South Carolina, Northwest Ohio, Ontario, Canada. All over the place. All over the place. Here we've got, it says oh, I've been. Uh, so I just have to throw this out here because we had this discussion after our last giveaway. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh. Didn't think about it, but people could be watching and from winning everywhere. from yeah, everywhere. And it's true. unfortunately, shipping your free item internationally could get very expensive depending on where you're from. So our caveat is if someone wins internationally, we would ask if they would be willing to help out with the shipping to get their freebie items to them. So just saying so that doesn't pop up at the end and surprise. Just adding rules to the game. This is the way she plays cards, too. Oh, by the way, uh, also, uh, if you have these cards in your hand, you win automatically. You need me to go make you another one. Um, there's a few other things in here that say, uh, do the UTI symptoms count with puppies, too? Yes, they do. Um, but what I'm going to do is make Mama a quick... Virgin mojito. Since he has the bottle just sitting there, he can top himself off and refill anytime he wants. But I'm going to ask another question then. Oh, here's another size question. All the size questions from Chris Polkney. Sorry if I said that wrong. My GSP just turned one year old and she weighs in at 40 pounds. Has she reached her full size? We've got the big guy and the little girl. So again, seeing a picture of your puppy would really help. Well, your old dog now would really help be able to gauge body condition. She sounds small, but that's not completely abnormal. I've seen small short hairs um, before, and I would say um, she's probably about at the top of her size. She's definitely not going to get any taller at this point. If she's still intact and not spayed, she's probably going to put on and develop a little more muscle, but not a lot as a female. So you can expect her to probably be around 40 pounds, maybe 43, 44 pounds, um, if she muscles out a little bit more. But it should be muscle, not fat, at this point. Aw, thanks, honey. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. We got a little bit of time, and everybody's been waiting. We drug it out long enough. He's back, and I've got a full drink, so I can sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. <sighs> The Pink Gun, who has seen better days, I will tell you. The original Pink Gun. This is the original, and uh, what we talked about is telling the origin story of said Pink Gun. Okay, guys, so when we started training dogs, and I'm going to get some close-ups of this because this gun is pretty freaking cool. Um, I owned one shotgun. It's a TriStar Arms. 20, camouflage shotgun 20, 20 gauge. gauge yep and it was a semi-automatic okay so i actually won that gun in a essay contest 
for the Kansas governor's one-shot turkey hunt. I wrote an, uh, an essay out as a senior in high school and got the opportunity to go to this all-inclusive turkey, uh, hunt. turkey hunt Yep, with the governor, and I got to meet at the time. It was uh, Sibelius was her name, maybe? I don't remember now. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but he remembers um, the gun. Yep. So... Anyhow, I uh, I won this shotgun. I used it to shoot pheasants, and I used it to do everything, and then I had this shotgun, which when you are training dogs, it is not the easiest thing in the whole world to train with a semi-automatic shotgun. It's not the safest thing in the whole world. A break-open gun is a little easier. At that spur of the moment, you shoot, you break it open, then you know it's safe if you got to lay it on the ground to handle the dog or do whatever. Now, the other side of that is... You lay that shotgun on the ground, inevitably, every single time, the dog has to run over and jump on it some way, shape, or form, and I didn't want my only shotgun that I was trying to take care of to get beat up, so, or any more than it already had, so I went, I need a beater shotgun, and I need it to be break open, and I believe that a single shot, these are all things that went through my head, okay, a single shot will make me a better shot with a shotgun because I'll have to focus on taking Aim the one small, shot. small, miss Aim small. small, miss small is absolutely right. And I get one shot, so I'm going to get better, and that's going to make me the most amazing wild bird hunter in the history of wild bird hunters. These are all thoughts that went through my head, okay? So I go out on a mission, and I made it to the first gun store that I came across, which was... The only gun shop. It, it was the only, but it was also the first, Okay. Shemantics. This was in this guy's basement. Um, it's Norton, Kansas. This gentleman has a small gun shop, and I can't think of what it's called. Mm, I don't know. Bob's Gun Shop in the bottom of his basement, okay? He uh, walked down there, and I look and see, and he happens to have a single shot, Stevens Arms, from 1985. 20-gauge. 20 gauge shotgun. That's this guy. And I want to get this up here close. Um, it's a Stevens Arms model 940D. And it's made uh, by Savage Arms in the United States of America, baby. Uh, this thing will shoot a two and three quarter inch and a three inch shell. Now, I'm going to see if I can get. Mm, I don't know if I can get up close enough there. It actually has like a crappy version of a setter engraved on the side of it. Let's get closer. I think it's blurry. Oh, come there. on now. Focus, focus, come on. camera. And then we need some light on it. Ooh, can you see that on there? I don't know if you can see it or not. Anyhow, so I start using this thing. You know, because it's going to make me the world's greatest upland bird hunter, right? It's uh, it's single shot. I've only got one option now. I'm going to get so good. And I will tell you what, I got really, really, really good at killing birds with this specific gun. And the problem with it is when you pull, you can't see the front bead. Therefore, you can't put a level plane across the barrel. Therefore, you end up shooting, what would it be? Instinctually, Low. well, kind of. if you're shooting down the barrel, you're technically shooting under. You're shooting under, yeah. So everything I shot without this shotgun, once I figured it out, I was shooting low. This for whatever I was shooting high or low doesn't really matter. Missing. I was missing and or sh just barely like, like dropping legs or doing all kinds of stuff, but it was always consistently off because I shot this gun so much in training um, that I eventually wore out the firing pin, which can be done, and I couldn't hit anything else with any other shotgun. But after I wore out the firing pin in the shotgun. Um, I started carrying it at hunt tests. Now, at the hunt tests in the master level, you have to carry a break-open shotgun, and I carried this for a very long time. Now, in the beginning, it didn't take me very long. I figured out the game. I put a lot of time in training, and toot, that was my own horn there. I did a really nice job 
running dogs, finishing dogs, passing dogs. And, you know, I would go as, and I would enter the two or three dogs that I had running masters that season and pass almost every brace or all but one or two braces. And I would be the only dog that weekend that passed or one of really only a couple high pass percentage ratio. I yeah. Guess. I'm, I mean, I'm up in the upper, if you like overall master hunter passes for entries, I'm up in the upper 70 plus percentile range, which is, it's pretty good. Um, especially with all of the things that can go long, wrong at that level. And I, still didn't get calls to run dogs and I wanted to stand out. Okay. So here it is. I took the shotgun and I painted it pink. This is spray paint. This is the original. A lot of it's coming off here now. Yeah. You can Um, see back to the original wood. uh, Yes, you can. I don't think you could. I don't know how well you can see that. Whatever. It's coming off. So this was the original paint job on this bad boy. Spray painted it pink because I wanted to stand out while I was at these hunt tests. It's like, whatever. What, what is that dude doing? Which is what all you said. I stole my wife's gun or I, you know, matches my underwear or something else. Right. So I just wanted to stand out. I thought, what can I do to be not normal in a man's manly man bird dog world, right? And that was to carry a pink shotgun. That was my idea anyhow. And it worked. I actually got some phone calls that people are like, hey, or people referred to me as that kid or that guy with the pink gun. Yeah, who was that guy with the pink gun was that, that guy? Then got you all start those sticking, passes. right? Then you start sticking to people's head and they're like, whoa, I don't know his name, but I know who he is. And, and ask around enough, the test secretary will be able to tell you who that guy was. Who the guy with the pink gun was. And I started getting a few dogs in for training and and people were like, yeah, we just knew you as the guy with the pink gun. That that young, well, one one couple specifically, they, they referred to me as the kid with the pink gun because, I, I mean, this is 10 years ago or close to. So um, yeah. then this thing was broken and I didn't want to fix it. And I was tired of it taking a weekend or a week to re be able to try and hit stuff with a regular shotgun again. That I said, I'm going to get, I'm, I saved up some money at the time. I'm going to buy myself a nice shotgun. And I bought a Beretta Silver Pigeon. It's the 686 model. It's a over and under shotgun. Always loved Berettas. I got to shoot one a couple times, and I thought, man, this this gun fits me perfect. I love it. I want I want one. Okay, so I got one. Started using it in training. Took real good care of it. Didn't toss it down in the dirt for dogs to in, inevitably stomp all over. And we were taking pictures and pictures in story posts and pictures on social media. And videos. And, and videos and everything else, and everybody started hassling me. What happened to the pink gun? 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 I mean, it happened all over the place. Every single thing was, where's the pink gun? I went. (sighs) I'm going to have to turn this pink, this gun pink too. I'm going to have to paint my Beretta pink. So I did. But he didn't use spray paint, to be fair. I went, this gun is a quality gun. It deserves a quality paint job. So that's when I went down to... Um, FTW coatings in Wichita where they do Cerakote. And I said, turn this pink for me. And he said, what? (laughs) I said, pink, please. And he said, okay, well, what we've got is this, which happens to be Cerakote, which has a, uh, an amazing sense of humor. The people that name those colors are awesome. (laughs) Okay. So my specific color on my shotgun now. No. Throw in the comments, because I just got to see what you guys think the color is named. Okay. Because what it's hilarious. What is Cerakote's pink color named? Um, and then we'll get into the rest of it. So, basically, the reason Roundabout has evolved, okay? Um, originally, I made, I carried a pink gun so that I could stand out and I could be noticed as a new and young individual upcoming in the dog training and handling and testing world. And then it evolved into, I now carry a pink gun because y'all want me to carry a pink gun. 
You're known as the guy with the pink gun. And it's been years enough that it's pretty much stuck. So now I have a Beretta A400 in pink. That was mine originally. Yeah, I got you a new one. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. So I took Kat's shotgun because we were short on time. Well, he did technically steal my shotgun at one point in time. But it wasn't pink to begin with. It was not pink. And then he turned it pink. Yes. So my cat's original, mine now, because I got you a new gun. Uh, A400 is pink. Uh, my 686 is pink. And then I just picked up a 686 in 28 gauge, which I think is going to end up pink. Probably. Probably. Yep. It's kind of the thing. Pink shotguns, whatever. And um, you did um, end up getting a TriStar in amongst there to do yeah, some trick a, shooting another with. Another guy. Another. And if you guys are looking for guns, this guy definitely has guns still or can get guns for you. It's Spare Change Defense. You can go to sparechangedefense.com. He actually sent us out a uh, TriStar. It's their uh, Viper G2. And it is in Cerakoted pink, just the same. Oh, here we go. We've got colors coming in. But he sent it out so that he can do some trick shooting, and mm-hmm. we put a couple videos together with it. So you'll have yeah, to follow. Yeah, some people along. already know. They prison they, pink, prison they pink, it. prison pink. Yeah, yeah Google, yeah, 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 yeah. good job. So prison pink now, um, but that is that is now the color of uh, the shotgun. And um, just one one more fun thing about uh, their color names is our our buddy Peter, which you've seen in some of the videos, the vet. He's yeah, been let's in tell some, this little fun uh-huh. story. So I always give him a hard time about it. he can't hit anything. And he said, hey, you're your Cerakote guy. Do you think he can help me out with a shotgun that he's got with the tube extension for late season snow goose hunting? So he wanted it in snow camo. And I said, yeah, I bet the guy can do it. I mean, he does a great job. Well, guess what the white color is that we put on that? Stormtrooper white, baby. Yep, so I said it's a very fitting color because you can't hit shit. Okay. Here it is, buddy. Here's your Stormtrooper white shotgun. Pew, 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 pew. All the geese fly away. (laughs) That's it. There you have it. The story of the pink gun. It's the origin. It's the whole kit and caboodle. I hope you weren't overly disappointed. But like I said, it has evolved a bit from a way for a young up-and-coming out in a predominantly man's world. And uh, And I would get... And manly man's world. I would also get teased because we had one gun to do all of these hunt tests with so when i was running dogs i would also be carrying the pink shotgun and people like oh your pink gun it's so cute and i'm like it's my husband's pink gun actually and then everyone got a kick out of that so Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so there you have it. You heard it live. You guys are the first people to officially know outside of a very, very, very small circle of the true meaning behind the gun. No, it doesn't have any deeper underlying meaning about breast cancer awareness, though I am all about uh, breast cancer awareness. It's uh, something that's happened. Our family members have had to deal with and close friends have had to deal with. And I uh, sometimes definitely I respect that. 100% do. And I wish sometimes that there was a little more meaning to it but ultimately it's it's come down to uh everybody gets kicked out of it so i get a kick out of it and it's easy it's uh it's a pretty good conversation starter and it never fails when i pull it out of the case and we go hunting it is 100 percent the first thing that anybody asks me about uh dude what's up with the pink gun funny you ask and then I just make something up on the spot every single time. Oh, well, you know, there was this one time where this, I don't know, I just, whatever comes to my mind at that minute, that's, that's that day why I have a pink gun. Well, thank you guys all for tuning in, following along, and waiting so patiently for that interesting story. Interesting. That was a good story. Hey, give wanna... me, give it, let's go thumbs up for the pink gun story. Come on, y'all. And thanks for sticking around to hear it um, and for, for holding on and waiting for us to get to it. I wanted to mention one thing, too, before we get to our trivia question that I just, I couldn't believe. I was shocked because I'm like, we're, you know, over 50,000 subscribers now, thanks to you guys, which is awesome. But I was like, I wonder how many people watching our videos subscribe. Not as many as you'd think, which we would love it if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It definitely would help us out. Um, But a whole whopping 13% of you that watch our videos are subscribers. 
the other 87% do not subscribe. Yeah, that's kind of bad. So we would love it if we could increase that number just a little. All right, folks, for this evening, we've got a little trivia going on. We're going to play some games. We're going to see what we can come up with. And uh, we're going to throw out a – what it'll end up doing is we'll, we'll get you back with a code that allows you to get a free hat and T-shirt off of standingsnokennels.com's store. And uh, there's some pretty baller ones out there, the old – Homie, homie hat or some of the other standing stone ones. Uh, we've got that GSP America and America Classic, the blue gray, the the bright red, white, and blue one. We've got some really cool options. Yes. So which question do you want to ask? That one or that one? Oh, you can start with that one. That's easy. Which is that one? Uh, which this one? I didn't even look. So helpful. Okay. What year did we start standing oh, we stone time. kennels? Pop. Glug, glug. All right, let's throw them in there. We're going to give you guys, because we're at the end here. Oh, people like the, the story. Lots of thumbs ups. Aw, thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Thanks for giving us no thumbs downs. <laughs> <laughs> Your story sucked, bro. Uh, um, let's go with a timer. We got 60 seconds. 60 seconds. It's all your fa- fault, Ryan McManus. He oh. said, uh, I'm sorry, when I watch YouTube at work, <laughs> won't let me log in, so it looks like I'm not subscribed. <laughs> ah. Well, we hope you don't get in trouble at work for watching our stuff. Yeah, don't get in trouble. That's no fun. So the question was, what year did we start the kennel business, right? Are we getting some answers? We are. Are you getting the timer? Will it go off? Mm-hmm, it'll go off here. Holy. I know. God dang. That's why the next one's harder. That's why the next one's harder. We have to have another whittle it down thing. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Let me see the timer. His wife subscribes. (laughs) Woo-woo. It's going to pop up there. Thanks, Michelle. There it is, right there. Time's See, up. just like I said. So, Ryan Hurley was the last one to get in on that. So, Sissy Pink, come on now. The answer is 2012. Uh huh. Uh huh. See. Uh huh. So, lots of correct questions. That's off or answers. Correct answers to the question. All right, folks. Next question. What do we got? Hmm. This one's going to be a two-parter, or, yeah, two parts, because I want them to list them, too. That makes it harder. Oh, does so, it? So. I don't even know if I could get this one correct. Okay, this is the first part of the question, and if we need the tiebreaker, I'll go to the second part. I've got a fun one. The, this one This one would be fun before that. Okay. Okay. I don't. So I haven't is, approved the question. You haven't approved the question, but you know the answer. Um, does everyone know the answer? I I doubt it. I bet that the the diehards know the answer because it's okay. something we talk about all the time. Okay. okay? Yep. So I'm this gonna... is a dog training trivia question. Ooh. What is? I know the answer. I don't even know what I. I think the I most important part of dog training. The most important thing in dog training. It is the most important. What is the most important? Throw it in. You've got 60 seconds, folks. I'm just going to sip bourbon. That's better than me making noise. Do you know the answer, Kat? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Oh, for sure I knew that. No, that's just gibberish. That <laughs> is just gibberish, just typing letters. Okay, oh, do we have any answers coming we through? We've got a couple answers coming through. Uh-oh, this was Ooh, tough, guys. couple questions and answers. Oh, 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 oh. How Look much time is left? Not very much. Rub in the Weller. <laughs> Weller, baby. Ooh, ooh. You come over here and hang out. We'll set up. We'll do a bird, dogs, and bourbon, all right? You and me. Timer. There it is. 
So Eric McKay was the last one to get in on that. And the Eric answer McKay. is timing. Timing is the answer. God dang, y'all got a lot of them right. Jeez Louise. That's a good thing. Now, the next uh, most important thing in timing would be consistency. And the reason why timing is more important than consistency in our book is that if you're consistently marking the wrong marking time. at the wrong time, it doesn't matter. You're still marking the wrong thing. So and your dog isn't going to learn. Your timing has got to be consistent. If you're at least marking the right time inconsistently, you're at least marking the right time. So you're going to be moving in the right direction. You won't be moving because as fast. Because it doesn't truly take that many reps nah. if your timing is right for a dog to figure things out. We show that through some of our free shaping videos that we've done, how quickly that timing can make a difference. Y'all are awesome. So uh, we've got one more. There's yours. It's very difficult. How many GSPs do we own? How many GSPs do we own? Here we go. 60 seconds. Are they rolling through yet? Not yet. Takes a second, I think, for it to buffer on that end and then then buffer back this direction. Oh, here we go. Now they're coming through. Now we're getting some numbers. Bing, bing, bing. Numbers bing, rolling bing, in. Bing, bing, bing. Ah, sorry, uh, S, uh, Predmore, Predmore, too little, late. Too late, sorry. Do the puppies count? No, puppies don't count, Ryan. <laughs> One million dollars. Pretty close. Time. I don't know, they're, they're, eight, 843 right there is the end. 843, okay. 843. You own all of them until you sell them. That was smooth. Ooh, yeah. Oh, somebody else popped in with who they are. <laughs> and two more. And Those two, two more. will be unnamed, I guess. Um, but anyway, let me go back. So, Ethan, how how many do you think we own? No. <laughs> well, right now we currently... No. Yeah, go ahead. Right now we currently own eight... GSPs. Mm -hmm. I almost got this one wrong myself because at first I included Clutch. <laughs> and we all know he's not a GSP. So, eight would be Grandpa Rex, Nyx, Vex, Thunder, Grit, Muddy, Quest, and Splash. Okay, so we've got four people that got the answer correct, I believe. That's awesome. Now, the question is, did those four people... Also get the other questions right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You already double-checked? No. Ooh. Brianna did not. Next is... S Stephen, Stephen, Harris. Sorry for the mismatch there. Timing, yeah. All right, Stephen Harris is in. And you got to go back up oh, to... Oh, shoot, go on. Yeah, dang. You could come up better. 2003, wrong. So you got two out of three, buddy. Um, who else we got? Jason. Jason. What was Jason's answer at the top? I'm looking, I'm looking. Timing, he got, got it. No. He's put 2008. Ooh. So far, we're down to Sarah Lucas. No, sorry, Sarah. Sorry <laughs> to get your hopes up. Jordan. And he also did not get that right because I think I just saw his answer. Something missed something. Jordan, recall. Nah. So, okay. So, we need <sighs> one more. We need one more question. And anybody that gets it right can get entered in the thing. We'll just You're, throw numbers We're not on looking there. back Yeah, either. whatever. Come on now. We gotta come up with a better way of playing this game for y'all. 
Those were all my really good trivia questions. They were really questions. good trivia questions. Come up with a better one. A better one, but not too difficult of one. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be fairly difficult because we only need a few people to draw from, not 134. What you got? Why is it always me? Hmm. Okay. I wish there was a way that I could, like, number these somehow and just go randomly with the people that are watching. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um... All right, so we're going to go with a number between... Oh, people are just going to pick a number? It's going to be just that random? Sure. Everybody no, that's, that's still... that's crap. That's not that crap. Come on now. It takes Lots no of people skill. Got, it doesn't take any skill, but people are here. They're, li- they're listening. They're okay, watching. Okay. We got some, some twos out of threes. We didn't get any three out of threes, so let's do it. Okay? Random number generator... All we need to do is y'all to pick a number between 1 and 150. Type oh, your number in who there. got 3 out of 3? Who got 3 out of 3? Did we miss something? I didn't put the number there. Eric, you... Did name the dogs, but you did not name the correct dogs. You did have the number right, but not the right dogs. You should have just list, listed you a number. Just had a number. Well, I guess it's tech. I don't know. That's it's eighty-eight percent correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pick a number between one and one hundred and thirty-four. People, people are roll picking. your numbers in there. Random number generator. We'll come up with a better way to do this. You got any suggestions? Throw it in there. All right. So our max is 134. Because that's how many people we had when watching when I saw that. Okay. We got we to gotta let people get a second to type their numbers, though, babe. So hold uh-huh. on. I don't know. <laughs> Ryan says, I think the guy that was here 30 minutes early should win. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also a good idea. We gotta come up with we gotta come up with something. Unfortunately. Ooh, these are good numbers coming through. Pop, glug, glug, glug. Here we go. How many points is on the deer behind you? Ooh wee. Well, that's also uh Oh, Not I suppose a bad one. since you can't see the top half of them. I don't think you can see her even. Can you? No, you he can't. You can't see the top. Just a muley. Muley big ears. Pierce those ears. All right, what do we got for some numbers here? Okay, is everybody in? We have a couple people that have duplicated numbers. That's all right. We'll figure it out when we need to get there. All right, we're going to go. <laughs> Some people put multiple numbers in there. Why not? Okay, do Have your fun. random calculator thing. Okay, number is uh, seven zero. No oh, seven did, zeros. Oh, Eric McKay said that Doan did say eight before naming them. Oh, I missed that. So did he technically get all three questions? <laughs> we went to all this trouble. Who? Oh, where? I'm I'm going back. Okay. Back, back, back. Eric, 2012. Eight, right there. Answers. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, well, if Ethan could have helped more, we would have known that. No, timing and reps, I guess, yeah. Timing. Okay, thank you all for putting a number down. <laughs> <laughs> that was just for shits and giggles tonight. All right, let's pick some random numbers here. Let's give away two since everybody took the time. Yeah, Eric, okay. you, uh, Eric, and then, right? Did we have anybody that had a 70? Did we? I, I didn't see any 70s. Next answer is 56. There's a 57 and a 55. The 56, Denise Steele. Let me see if I missed anybody else. 
Go ahead. Go ahead and mark those two. How do I do that? You oh, just pin, pin them. Pin them. Those are the two winner, I... winner, chicken dinner. All right, I Eric. Just, how do you do it? Oh, just hold, hold down on hold it. Hold down and do it. Or tap it. Okay. Oh, you have. To, I just replaced pin. Oh, we'll only you can let only you pin, pin one. one at a time. So that's interesting. We could replace pin as we're going through them. All right, that's it. Eric Doan and uh, Eric had actually picked fifty six too. Are you serious? <laughs> Hey, winner, winner, double winner, okay? Double hey, chicken dinner. fantastic. All we need you all to do is uh, message us. <laughs> email. It was meant to be. It was meant to be, that's for sure. Uh, email, uh, Instagram, Facebook, something, something. Send us a message. I'll get you out a code that gets you access to one hat and one T-shirt of your choice off of our website. Thanks, everybody, for watching. That is all the time that we have for whoop. I'm out of bourbon, and we're out of time. Yeah, we, we are. But since we do need help figuring out how to give you away more good stuff, put it in the comments, too. We want to try and give something away. So give us some suggestions on how we can get you some more free stuff. Do this better. Because obviously we're not game show hosts. <laughs> we just need a wheel. Everybody can come spin the damn thing. <laughs> 